हेलो एवरीवन, आई एम डॉक्टर स्नेहा चौधरी सेकंड ईयर पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट स्टूडेंट इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ रेडियो डायग्नोसिस महर्षि मार्कंडेश्वर इंस्टीट्यूट मुलाना द टॉपिक ऑफ माय पेपर इज रोल ऑफ एमआरआई इन इवेल्युएशन ऑफ मैलेग्नेंट लीजन ऑफ ओरल कैविटी एंड टंग ओरल कैंसर आर अमंग द टॉप थ्री कैंसर इन इंडिया Among the malignant lesions, squamous cell carcinoma is predominant, accounting for more than 90%. Most common risk factors include long-term overuse of alcohol and tobacco. Other risk factors are HPV, poor oral hygiene, and positive family history of oral cancers. Five-year survival rates of oral cancer and uh, oral and tongue cancer is approximately 50%. Cross-sectional imaging has become a cornerstone in pre-treatment evaluation of these cancers. as it provide an accurate information about the extent and depth of the disease which helps in appropriate management strategy and indicate prognosis ct and mri are often complementary in assessment of oral cavity and oropharyngeal pathologies this is agcc tnm classification of the oral cavity carcinomas mri readily reveals tumor invasion and spread to the surrounding structures due to its excellent soft tissue discrimination So MRI can be used to assess the extent of local and regional tumor spread, the depth of invasion, and the extent of lymphadenopathy. Also, MRI does not expose the patient to any harmful radiation and should also be used instead of CT, where dental fillings can obscure the region of interest. The sensitive, the sensitivity, specificity, and accuracy of MRI in detection of mandibular invasion is also high. and mri can detect marrow invasion by the tumor involvement of the base of tongue floor of mouth and extension into the oropharynx aims and objectives are to evaluate the role of mri in loco regional staging of malignant lesions of oral cavity and tongue and to correlate these findings with clinical surgical anatomical and pathological findings the study was carried out in the in the department of radio diagnosis in maharshi markandeshwar institute 30 cases were included in the study the inclusion criteria was any histologically proven or clinically suspected malignant lesion of oral cavity and tongue and all the patients with contraindications to mri were excluded from the study the study was carried out on the 1.5 tesla mri machine and the mri protocol is stated the results and observation of my study was that the cancer was predominantly found in males while uh, tongue was the most common site of involvement followed by buccal mucosa and alveolar followed by heart palate the age incidence of my study showed that most of the patients were between 30 to 60 years of age group and my study showed a moderate agreement between the clinical and mri t staging and a fair agreement between mri and clinical n staging a good agreement was seen between mri and histopathological t and n staging while a poor agreement was seen between clinical and histopathological t as well as n staging so the first case is of a female who presented with a non healing ulcer on the left lateral border of the tongue which bleeded on touch and histopathological studies revealed a moderately differentiated squamous cell carcinoma these are the mri images which shows a large infiltrating mass involving anterior two third of the tongue and the base of the tongue appearing heterogeneously hypo intense on t1 weighted images whereas it appears heterogeneously hyper intense on t2 weighted images with a contralateral extension on the right side infiltrating into the floor of mouth involving glossopharyngeal sulcus left tonsil vellicula left parapharyngeal space and masticator space with hyoid bone erosions and nodal deposits This is a second case of a 67 year old male patient who presented with a ulcer on the right side of the tongue since 2 years he was a chronic smoker and a tobacco chewer the histopathological reports were consistent with poorly differentiated squamous cell carcinoma the mri images revealed an irregular ulcerated mass lesion which appeared hypo intense on t1 weighted images and heterogeneously hyper intense on t2 weighted images in the right lateral border of the tongue no involvement of the extrinsic muscles or any contralateral extension or bony erosions were seen in this next case a 32 year old male presented with a complaint of difficulty in opening the mouth and pain in the left side of the jaw since 3 months and mri images revealed a large heterogeneously infiltrating mass showing a epicenter along the left buccal mucosa which appeared iso intense to the tongue muscles on uh, t1 weighted images and hyper intense on t2 weighted images which was seen extending till the left parapharyngeal space with involvement of the masticator space and erosions of the left ramus of the mandible in the next case 
uh, a female presented with a history of pain, burning sensation, pus discharge, bleeding with an ulcerative lesion in the right side of the alveolar ridge since four months. On the MRI images, we can see destruction of the right maxillary alveolar arch by a large soft tissue lesion appearing iso intense to the tongue muscles on T1 weighted images and mildly hyper intense on T2 weighted images with associated destruction of the right enteral floor. Intrasinus extension was also seen. Next case, a patient presented with a complaint of pain and swelling over the right side of the cheek. The patient was a chronic smoker and histopathology revealed a poorly differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. MRI images showed a large ulceroproliferative soft tissue lesion centered in the right buccal mucosa appearing hypo-intense on T1 weighted images and hyper-intense on T2 weighted images with extensive destruction of the right half of the mandible with fracture and cranial deviation of the angle of the mandible. Large defect was seen along the right cheek with fistulous communication with the oral cavity. So to conclude my paper, I would like to say that MRI showed a high correlation with histopathology for thickness of the mucosal epithelium and both depth and width of the tumor. Preoperative estimation of the thickness of tumor and prediction of occult cervical nodal metastasis was satisfactory. The mucosal epithelium, lamina propria and muscles of the tongue were clearly identified on MRI. New improvements in the MRI such as surface coil technology, motion and flow compensation imaging strategies has made MRI as the modality of choice for assessment of oropharyngeal, mouth and tongue soft tissue masses. TNM classification helps in planning treatment options. These are the references for my study. Thank you.